ministry of the Word. Mm -hmm. We thank God for allowing us to be here yet Amen. one more time Amen. to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if you have your Bibles with you today, I would ask that you turn with me to New Testament reading. We'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 6. We'll be looking at 17, verse 17. But instead of 17a this week, we'll be looking at 17b. That is the second half of Ephesians 6, 17. Could you all demonstrate that you have those verses by just simply saying, Amen. 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 I'll begin reading. And the sword of the Spirit, mm -hmm. which is the Word of God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And the tag that we've been tagging this particular text with is valiantly onward or courageously onward. And church in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8, we find these words, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God Amen. stands forever. The Apostle Peter picked up on this verse, for in 1 Peter Chapter 1, verses 24 and 25, he quotes what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8 by saying, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. And church, what this shows us is not only the internal consistency of the Word of God, it shows us in the words of the psalmist in Psalm 119 and 89 that the Word of the Lord is firmly fixed. The Word of God is settled in the heavens. And if the Word of God is firmly fixed, settled in heaven, it means that its truths never change. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yeah. we may change, but we need to understand the Lord's truth never changes. Right. Heaven and earth may even pass away, but the Lord's word will forever remain unchanged. Right. It will forever endure. And we need to understand this as well, that before we even got here, before we were even born, before we had an existence on planetary level, there was the Word of God. And after we leave here, mm -hmm. after a preacher, if you have a preacher say last rites over you, after a preacher buries you and does the committal, the Word of God will still be here Amen. because His Word will not return unto Him void. His Word will accomplish the thing that He has sent it out to do. And so, church, the Word of God is perfect mm -hmm. because it restores the soul. The Word of God is a sure word because it makes wise the simple. The word of God is right because it rejoices the heart. The word of God is pure because it enlightens our eyes. Well, and the word of God is sufficient to right now. for every season that we are in in our lives. So no matter what you are experiencing yeah. on this day, you've yeah. got to know that the word of God is sufficient for that situation because it's a, a God-breathed word. It's a sin-convicting word. It's an authoritative word. It's a healing word. It's a promise-confirming word. And within this book, 
we find beautiful words. Amen. Within this book, we find the wonderful words of life. As the kids used to say back in the day, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Mm -hmm. And saints, whenever we find ourselves, mm -hmm. yes, between the rock and the hard place, yes. we need to stand firmly on the word of God. Amen. Yes, whenever we find ourselves in life in a tight spot. You ever been in a tight spot before? Yeah, yeah. Yes, when we are in a tight spot and we don't have much room to wiggle, we need to stand on the Word of God. As a matter of fact, when you are in that tight spot, when God begins to open up some space for you to move, it would be appropriate if we ask God to order our steps according to his word because after all the steps of a good man the steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord so understand saints the word will not always tell us what we want to hear you ain't gonna always get what you want to hear but what the Word of God will do is tell you what you need to hear. It will tell us what we need to hear. Because Jesus said it this way in John 17, 17. He said, sanctify them with your truth. Your Word is truth. And so, beloved, our God is the God of truth. As Jesus himself said in John 14 and 6, he said, I am the way, mm -hmm. yes, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No one comes to the Father but by me. Amen. And so the truth of God's word is one of the ways in which he preserves us. One of the ways in which he, he keeps us, that he's sanctifying us because when we are sitting under the word, when we are reading the word of God, don't you all know the day that it's a means of grace? Well, yes, God has given us grace. And I don't know about you, but I didn't just need grace when I got saved. I need grace for every single day of my life. So this is the reason that the Word of God needs to have priority yes. in the life of a local church. Mm -hmm. The Word of God, I'm going to say that again, the Word of God needs to have priority mm -hmm. in the life of a local church. And it ought not to be neglected. Mm -hmm. Because while society is growing more and more wicked, mm -hmm. yeah. We living in some wicked times, aren't we? We living in some dangerous times. While society and the culture is growing more wicked and more dangerous, it is we, the local church, the church, the church of the living God, who needs to stick with the sufficient word of God. Amen. Church, I'm going to tell you, we can ill afford to wink and not at the word of God as the truth. While at the same time. Well, undermining its authority by the way we live. Yeah. But some of y'all yeah. missed your yeah. 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 Because here's the verdict. Either we believe God has spoken. What he wants us to do. Well, concerning the matters of our faith and our practice. As contained in the 66 books, canonical books. Yeah. Either God has spoken in these books and we believe it or we don't believe it. That's, it. That's, it. That's, it. That's, it. That's the verdict. Either you're going to believe it or you don't believe it. Right. And if there's ever a time in the history of the church where the sufficiency of the word the inspiration of the word, well. the authority of the word,
The truthfulness of the word yep. is under assault, mm. attack, under fire. That time is now. Amen. I had an opportunity to read through uh, Legionnaire Ministries uh, State of Theology for 2022. They publish it every two years. And the State of Theology basically tracks trends of where Americans are and what they believe about Jesus, well. what they believe about the Bible, what they believe about truth, and what they believe about ethics. And since we are dealing with the Word of God today, I thought I would especially give focus to the section of the state of theology that dealt with what people believe about the Bible. And it's under, you can, you can look it up yourself, it's under Statement 16, because Statement 16 says this, it says, The Bible, like all sacred writings, contains helpful accounts of ancient myths, but is not literally true. I'm going to read that again. The Bible, because it's not a trick question, but, but it's not a trick statement. Either you agree or you don't agree. The Bible, like all sacred writings, contains helpful accounts of ancient myths, but is not literally true. And let me tell you, in 2014, 41% of the people surveyed agreed with that statement. Mm -hmm. In 2016, 44% of the people who were sampled or who were surveyed regarding that particular statement agreed with it. In 2018, 47% of people agreed with that statement. In 2020, 48% of people agreed with that statement. And here in 2022, 53% of people agree that that statement is true. Lord, help us. Because what this lets us know, what this trend tells us, is there are a whole lot of people who are rejecting divine authorship and the and authority of the word of God. And I bet I bet some of those people go to church every Sunday. But but not only this, beloved, these, these trends tell us that the Bible is becoming out of step with the culture in which we live. Amen. And what this means for us as a local church is we've got to be intentional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got to be intentional about what it is that we preach, what it is that we teach, and what it is that we believe. Amen. It means it's time out for sugar-coated, yeah. tickle my fancy, tell me something good preaching. Well. Where the preacher is more of a comedian and an entertainer than a proclaimer of truth. Stand on. But understand, hmm. this isn't new. Because the saints living in Paul's day, mm -hmm. the saints living in Ephesus, were living in a culture that was hostile to their faith. I mean, they worshiped the goddess Diana was also known as Artemis. They worshiped other gods as well. And what I'm trying to say, church, is that we've got to stand on the essentials of the faith that were once delivered to the saints. we got to stand on what God's word says about the gospel and let God be true. Yes, sir. And every other man, every other woman, every other critic, be a liar. Mm -hmm. So when we come to the verse before us, mm -hmm. we are reminded of our need for the word of God mm -hmm. as a weapon of our warfare. For as the Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
They're not worldly. We don't wage war as the world does. They are mighty through God to the point of pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. And a stronghold is any thought, any belief that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Well. Understand, when somebody is in a stronghold, you can always tell because they resist it to change. Mm -hmm. Because strongholds are like a walled city. Well, A walled city, a walled fortress in that you can't get nothing in and you're certainly not getting anything out. And the only way to demolish the stronghold is with the word of truth. And so in this verse, we see this, this weapon. It's, it's called the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And this piece of weaponry is specifically used for fighting against Satan. Well, This sword of the spirit is an offensive weapon. It's a weapon that we must be able to use. And when we use this weapon, we better make sure that our weapon, that our sword is sharp and not noble. Amen. Because the problem with most saints is, is when we go to war, when we go to spiritual battle against Satan and his minions, our, our blade is too sharp. Our blade is too dull, rather. And we don't have our blade sharp enough. Right. And so Satan, we must understand, knows the word just like we do. Mm -hmm. Satan is a, is a student of scripture. He's probably a better student of scripture than we are. Right. I'm reminded in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus had just finished the long fast. Mm -hmm. Satan comes to Jesus with various temptations. And Jesus' response was, it is written. Yes. Yes. To each temptation, Jesus responded by saying, it is written. Jesus, the divine Logos, the incarnate word, while he was dealing with Satan, while he was doing battle with Satan, was speaking a rhema word. Yes, the Logos was speaking a rhema, which is the word for the word in Ephesians 6, 17. That word, word, W-O-R-D, is rhema. See, the Logos, the incarnate word, Jesus, is what John talked about in John 1, 1, when he said, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Yet in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus, the divine Logos, is doing battle with Satan. And he quotes a rhema word because he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but every rhema that proceeds from the mouth of and if this is what Jesus was doing, what do you think we need to be doing? Oh my God. We need to be using the word of God because the rhema word is a specific word that is spoken to us. It's not only spoken to us, but it's spoken by us. And it's spoken through us in the various spiritual battles that we are facing. You need a word in season. Amen. That's the reason why your sword, our swords got to be sharp. Mm -hmm. Because we got to know how to handle the word rightly. Well. We got to know how to cut the word straight. Yeah. And you got to make sure that when you cut the word straight when the hellhounds are on you that you know how to cut it straight with a sharp instrument. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hebrews 4 and 12 tells us, it says it this way, the word, that's Logos of God, is living. It's active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. 
So, understand, saints, this wasn't a big old long sword that you. No, this was like a small little dagger. You know, you keep close to your person. You know, keep it under your jacket. You know, you know, you may, you may need to pull it out in times of hand to hand combat. Because the enemy is getting so close on you. You got to get him up off of you. So you need something that's going to help you stick and move. Stick and move. And sometimes you just need a word in season that is going to help you stick and move when Satan is whispering in your ear or when his minions are using life circumstances to make you doubt your faith. Wow. You need a, a, a rhema word in season that's going to help you stick and move. Well, because on. Satan and his emissaries, mm -hmm. we should never forget, they want to keep, kill us. And so we need to understand that we need to keep our swords ready at all times. Amen. We got to keep our swords ready at all times. It's not enough for you to come in here on Wednesday. Ah. Come on, man. Watch out, Bridget. Open up the word and listen to me on Wednesday night or come up in here on Sunday. Open up the words. If you do open up the word and uh, listen to me speak to you about the word. And it's not enough to be able to do that if you're going to fight this spiritual battle valiantly. You're going to have to know that word for yourself. You're going to have to get in that word every single day of your life because Satan, our ancient foe, is patient. My God. The Bible says he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if you've ever watched Net Geo, if you ever watched one of those shows that got lions on them, and you know, you know that a lion will wait days sometimes to get its prey. Mm. I mean, track them and, and just be following behind them, waiting for the opportune time to launch an attack. Yeah. And, and usually when they catch another animal, when they catch, when a lion catches another animal, it's because that, that animal got careless. Mm -hmm. And they weren't paying attention to what was going on around them. Yeah. And when Satan gets us, mm -hmm. it's usually because we're being careless. Yeah. We're being careless in our spiritual lives and we're not paying attention to the spiritual realities that are happening around us. Right. There's a bigger picture going on than you and the problem you got with your wife or you or the problem you got with your husband or the problem that you got with your co-worker or the problem that you're having with the with the clerk at Meyer or at Walmart. There's a bigger picture here. Yeah. Yeah. Satan is waiting for an opportunity to devour you. Mm -hmm. So we got to have our swords ready at all times. Ready to speak a word to ourselves. Ready to speak a word over ourselves. In order for the light of the gospel to shine bright in the dark places of our lives, the dark places of the, the, the people's lives that we live with and hang with and roll with. Dark places in the culture in which we live. Make it clear, dog. So the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, unleashes some important truths. And we only gonna deal with two today. <laughs> I could I could preach this right here for about a whole month about the word of God, but we just gonna deal with two truths. Two important truths that are going to help us fight valiantly onward. And the first truth is the Word of God is divinely inspired. Mm -hmm. You got to stand on that. Come on. Mm -hmm. We got to stand on divine inspiration. 
Because once you lost that, you lost everything. Amen. If you don't believe that the Bible is divine rather than human in origin, there's nothing else you're going to stand on. Listen, if you don't believe, and I can say we, if we don't believe that Genesis 1-1 is true, if we don't believe Genesis 1-1 was tr is true, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I have no reason to believe that we'll believe anything else that comes well, after that. Divine inspiration is the battleground. Because the text says, this is the sword of the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in verse 17. This is the sword of the spirit. And what this means is, again, the word of God is not human in origin. It's divine in origin. As the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, all scripture, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be equipped, adequately equipped, for every good work. Well. Scripture, the word of God, is not like any other book because it's breathed to us. It's a God-breathed, God-inspired word. And every time we open up the word of God, you've got to know God is breathing on you. You've got to know that God is speaking to you. And when God is speaking to you, he's not like some of your girlfriends or some of your homies that you got to pass a mint to because their breath is kind of talking to you. When God speaks to us. His word is sweet. Even the sections that cut us. And we don't agree with it. And, and you know, it's okay to say that, that you don't necessarily agree with some of the parts of the word of God if you do that reverently. reverently. Because sometimes we come to certain parts of, the, of, of scripture and, and we don't clearly understand them. So we are our default response a lot of times is to say, I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. But it's not about whether or not we agree with yeah. it. Because the sovereign Lord of the universe, we need to know today he's not taking public opinion polls when it comes to truth. He's not going to stick his anthropomorphic finger in his mouth and stick it in the wind to determine which way the wind was blowing in your life to determine whether or not his word is true. His word is true whether we believe it, accept it, or not. And so, Scripture is not like any other book. It's not like Moby Dick. It, it, it's not like some of these other novels that people read. It's a God-breathed word that is useful for teaching, training, reproof. As the Apostle Peter declares in 2 Peter 1, 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, this is what the Apostle Peter says. He says, know this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture or no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit well. spoke from God. Men moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke. They spoke from God. So all scripture is God breathed. As Jesus said in himself in John chapter 10, verse 35, he said it this way. He said, scripture cannot be broken. It cannot be broken. And so the church, we as the church have to be under the authority of the word. The authority of the authority of the inspired word. And there is only one inspired word. 
The Watchtower translation is not an inspired word. Well, the Book of Mormon is not an inspired word. They may have some of the same books in their Bibles that, that we got, but that's not an inspired word. The Apocrypha is not an inspired word. These 66 canonical books are the inspired word of God. Those are the books that are authoritative for our faith and our practice. And so the Bible contains all that we need for our salvation. It contains all that we need for our sanctification. That's our holiness. The word of God is able to keep us from being gullible by the various false teachers that are running amok in our culture in churches across America because Satan and his emissaries are the force, the spirit behind false teachers. Yes. Whenever you see a false teacher mm -hmm. setting up shop in a local church, you got to know, you, you, you automatically, the light need to go off in your head. There, that's the yeah. mic. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, that's man. Satan. Because Satan and his emissaries disguise themselves as angels of light. And so they come in speaking just enough word to get your money out of your pocket. Well, they come in speaking just enough word to get you open and gullible to everything that they say. Jude said it this way. He said uh, they, they, kept, they crept in on the way. They crept in on the word. We didn't even know that they was a false teacher mm -hmm. because they dressed like us. <laughs> they talk like us. Mm -hmm. They could quote scripture. They could speak Christian needs. Mm -hmm. And so understand this today, beloved. The biggest threat we are facing as a church is not necessarily with that. Mm -hmm. Not outside the church. That's, that's low-hanging fruit. We know what's going on outside the church. The biggest threat that we are facing today in the local church is the threat from within. Those who have grown up in the church, they know enough about the Bible to be dangerous. And they lead folk astray. So we need an inspired word because the word of God makes us wise so that we can be skilled in our daily living. We need the word of God to make us wise so that we are able to distinguish or discern truth from error. Y'all ready for number two, right? Mm -hmm. If the first truth is the word is divinely inspired, mm -hmm. the second truth is the word is to be defended against error. The word is to be defended against error. Amen. The text, coming back to the text, the text says the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which if the text says the word of God is like a sword, it means it has to be used or it has to be defended. We must make a defense regarding the truths that are found in the word of God. The apostle Peter said it this way in 1 Peter 3.15. He says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And always be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. See, whenever doctrinal error is present, you better believe Satan is present. Because error begets error. And error always leads people away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you may be asking practically, well, what does this look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, one, we, we need to be reading and praying the Bible daily. Read the Bible. Pray the Bible. Secondly, we need to be singing the Bible. Mm -hmm. Sing it. Find gospel-saturated hymns. Find music that is saturated with the word of God. Yes. Thirdly, we need to study the Bible. Study it. 
wrestle with the meaning of the text until God illuminates your mind as to what the authorial intent mm -hmm. was with that particular text when the author wrote that particular text mm -hmm. because we got an ancient text before us. Man. We need to get serious about memorizing the word. Get serious about memorizing the word. Commit to memorizing Romans chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Commit yourself to memorizing Psalm 119. Get serious about memorizing the word of God because the more words you get in you, yeah. the more word comes out of you. And so the word of God, beloved, is trustworthy. It's trustworthy because this resource that, that God has given us will direct us and help us to live in such a way that we'll be pleasing to God. Well, And so, when the word of God is followed, it becomes like the psalmist said in Psalm 119, a lamp for our feet, mm -hmm. a light for our path. Mm -hmm. Because when it's all said and done, when the smoke settles and the dust clears, we want to be found being obedient to the word of God. Because that's what matters most to God. When we know our lives are pleasing to God, it doesn't matter what anybody that's else right. thinks. That's right. When we know that our lives are pleasing to God, beloved, that is something you can rejoice over. Amen. You know, I found that folk will rejoice over a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But very few times in my life have I seen folk that I actually rejoiced because they heard about somebody else was being obedient to the word of God. That somebody was walking and living according to the truth. Listen, when you hear that somebody is living and walking according to the truth, don't you know that's something to celebrate over? Yes, yes. That's something to praise God about. Listen, even when you see yourself growing in the yes. faith and you're mortifying some of those old oh, sins man. of the flesh, listen, that's something for you and God to praise. Yes. That's something rather for you to praise God for yes. in your private time with the Lord. Yes. What that means is, is the joy of the Lord is your strength. And during times such as these, don't you all know today that we need the joy of the Lord in our hearts? I mean, it don't take much to get us down in the pits, does it? And so we need the joy of the Lord in our hearts. That's the kind of joy that's much deeper than a surface level happiness. So you can get happy about anything. But when you got the joy of the Lord in your heart, you ain't got to have a whole lot of happenings going on in your life to have joy. Because you got a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that is firm and, and stable. And it's not based upon what somebody else got or what you don't have. So God, beloved, has given us everything we need for godliness through the knowledge of his precious promises that are found in his word. As the songwriter said, how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, that is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you whom he said? To you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. So understand this today, beloved. Wielding our sword is not an easy task. Amen. I don't want you all to sit here in this sanctuary today and think that what I'm saying is easy because it's not. Fighting spiritual battles is not easy. Because in life, 
there's going to be some struggles. Am I right about it? In life, there's going to be some suffering. In life, there's going to be some strife. In life, there's going to be some setbacks. Yet we must not forget, no matter what our struggles are, no matter what our suffering is, no matter what our strife is, no matter what our setbacks are, all of those things are really setups for comebacks. Because no matter what the situation is, we got to have the faith enough in the Word to know that God will be with us. Because He said it in His Word. He said, Never will I leave thee, never will I forsake thee. We got to have the faith enough to, to believe, y'all, that Emmanuel is with us. Because our God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. So church, we need to keep our confidence in His Word. Keep our confidence in His Word. I don't care what nobody else is saying. Keep your focus on the Word. We keep our confidence in the Word because the Word is not just given to us for our information. Come on. No, it's given to us for our transformation. For the Word of God. It's like a mirror because it shows us who we really are. Yeah, no. Yes, the word of God is like seed because it produces life. The word of God is like bread because God is in the business of still feeding the hungry. The word of God is like a hammer. Because when we are convicted by that word, that word begins to break up sin in our lives. The word of God is like water to a dry, thirsty soul because it purifies, it quenches our thirst. The word of God is like honey because it's sweet to our taste. The word God is like the sword and it aids us in fighting valiantly onward. So fight manfully onward. With dark passions you've got to subdue. Look ever to Jesus because he will carry you through. Oh yes, I wish I had a few witnesses in here today that didn't mind asking the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you because you know he's willing to aid you and he will carry you through. Since it is he who gave us the word, we got to know today. As I believe I've got some witnesses here that he's worthy to be present. The word of the Lord is a life giving word. Oh yes it is. The word of God is a hope giving word. The word of God is a healing word. It's a promise kept word. It's a own time word. Not only this beloved, it's a love telling word. Because it's in the word that we find out that there was a Savior who died for us to set us free. Yes, it tells us of a Savior's love, as the hymn writer said, of a Savior who died to set us free. It's the pilgrim's comments. It's the weary traveler's encouragement. It's the will of God and the way of salvation for all mankind. Listen, we need to read his word to be wise. Read his word to be holy. Believe his word because it is our blessed hope. So as the song said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sand.
The name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise for His Word. God bless you today. And may heaven smile upon you. Perhaps there's somebody here today who have not trusted Jesus as Savior and Lord. And we must remember that the Bible says that all have sinned. Not so. All, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Listen, that's from the pulpit to the back pew, the chairs, across the street, around the corner, at your crib. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Word, God. Little word. Because we know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, what that means is, is we got a problem. We got a sin problem that needs to be dealt with. Because when you get to Romans chapter 6, it tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal yes, life. You. So now you know that you got a problem. Right. And now you know that there's a consequence for that problem. But this is how you fix the problem. Do it. Well, not necessarily you fix the problem, or how you let God fix the problem. Amen. Amen. Because then when you get to Romans 10, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. As we start going in, listen, there's only one mediator between God and man. Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can fix that problem. Jesus. He's the only one that can take care of that problem. Yes. Drugs can't take care of that problem. Jesus. Folk can't take care of that problem. Get more money is not going to take care of that problem. Because there's going to be a lot of people in hell who are going to bust hell wide open and got plenty of money. That's not going to take care of the problem. Yeah. What will take care of the problem is placing your faith in Jesus Christ Good. as the only Savior and Lord of the universe. So if you'd like to know more about what it means to be a disciple of Christ, just come see me after service. As a matter of fact, go see any member here at Mount Zion Baptist Church after service. And I have enough confidence in, in the members of Mount Zion Baptist Church that they will tell you what it takes to be saved. Amen. 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 So God bless you.